Hello, hello. Hey, guys. All right. If you're watching this part, you're watching the replay. Awesome. You're going to be able to watch this. Um, most of this video, you won't even have to actually watch. You can actually just listen to it. Um, so just know that. Um, I like to listen to stuff while I'm driving in the car and that sort of thing. And I get a lot of trainings done in, like, in that way. So just a fun tip. So welcome to our weekly powwow. Today is... March 13th and um, so we're closing close to the seminar end of the seminar year um, I can probably talk more about that later but basically Senegence's year per se goes from April 1st to March 31st instead of January 1st to December 31st so um, we are like really about to kick it off um, with our new year, but we really want to wrap up this year really well. So I thought it'd be a good time to start off um, with a couple of tips. Um, first, I want to tell you guys a couple of things, and then we're going to get into the really good stuff. Um, and I'm actually, I'll talk more about that in a second. But this is the Cineblends Beauty Beauty Guide. Cineblends Beauty Guide. This is only five dollars right now in the back office. So when you go and order product, speaking of product, I'm wearing. Um, She's Apples, which is a limited edition color, and uh, matte gloss, which I really actually like quite a bit. So, um, yeah, I have not. I don't wear matte gloss as often as I feel like I should. I love it. Um, okay, so this is our Cineblends Beauty Guide. This is only five dollars. Normally it's thirty, but they'll be coming out with a new one at, next year, probably at seminar. They'll be announcing the new one, and so that'll probably be 30. Um, so you can get these right now. I don't know how many they have left in stock or available, so get it while you can. The next time you place your order, get it. It's five bucks, and there's so much stuff in here. I wrote down a list of things I wanted to like real quick talk about, but basically, let's see. There is a skin quiz like to find out what type of skin type you are. There's a quiz, and then it's got the answers based on like what your answers were, and it tells you if you're normal to oily, dry, all that fun stuff. So that's a great way. It's only four questions, so you can even just use that to ask your customers um, and try to get an idea of what kind of skincare products they could use of ours. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Page 15 explains like the Senna Shield and what urbanization is. If you don't know what that is, there's a ton of information about that in the back office, but also right here in the Senna Blends Beauty Guide. Oh, there's how to contour, and it shows you exactly what to put in, like where to put stuff based on the face shape, which is really cool. There's a ton of information on that, and sorry, my nose itches. Uh, and then, you guys, this is so, so cool. There's different ideas um, for like what color eyes go with what, sh like what products that we have like different shadow sense colors and then there's also eye recipes so different like different blends that you could do with our products and there are lip ones as well where did those go uh 27 oh i skipped it i didn't write that down oh i didn't write it down but it's in there and it's really 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 cool 40 there we go Look at that, it gives you like three different options. You put these three colors on in this order and this is the color you get. So super cool stuff in there, tons of stuff. There is information on every single product that we have in this. You guys, it's five bucks and it's a really great investment for your business and it gives you great ideas um, like how to put on, based on the, like the eye shape that someone has, where to apply different colors. Um, just so much good information that I never had an idea. And this is probably like the bare basics that someone that goes to school, um, like cosmetology school, that they would learn. But it's great for someone like me who I didn't do any of that. I don't plan on going and like taking tons of classes to learn all that. So that's a great way to do that. Um, oh, so then I want to talk about. So I don't know about you guys, but I've been struggling with sales lately quite a bit. And I've talked to a few of you, and you've had kind of a similar situation where your sales have just been very low or even zero. And that can be really disheartening, and it can kind of get you down and get you, um, you're just not motivated to really do anything. And it's hard to stay active and to stay um, consistent. So I wanted to give you um, a couple of tips on how to change this. So... 
Um, what I wrote down here is post every single day. I can tell you the past couple months, I have been really, really bad at posting every single day in my customer group. I'm, I've gotten it to at least every other day now, but I've, I've just been slacking. And my sales are definitely um, slacking because of that. So the more work that you put into this, the more work, the more money you're going to get out of it, the more results that you'll see. And we'll talk about that more actually in the first principle of what I'm going to talk to you about in a bit. Um, but the consistency is super key. Following up with customers. So if you had someone that placed an order last month, you should be following up with them. They say you're supposed to follow up in about five days after that, after they um, have ordered and after you've shipped the product. So I got to tell you again, I'm slacking on this. Um, I definitely see that as a direct result as to why I do not have more, um, more sales more consistently. So follow up with your customers, just check and see if, how they're liking their product. Who knows, maybe they hate it because they've been applying it wrong. You never know. So you send them their little like tips and tricks on how to apply card, but they don't always read it. It's funny how many people apply their lip sense wrong. So just check back in with your customers within a few days of when they've received their product. See if they need anything else um, and ask them for a picture. Like say, hi, how's it going? I wanted to see how your lip sense is doing. I'm so excited to see how caramel apple looks on you. Send me a picture when you get a second. Something like that. They're gonna just they're gonna appreciate that you followed up with them and you asked how they liked it. They want that interaction with you. Uh, ask three friends, three friends, to do a Facebook party or an in-person party for you. Tell them that you're wanting to gain, gain experience. You want to, uh, maybe if you have never done one before, an in-person or a Facebook one, ask them if it could be your sister, your mom, your cousin, your neighbor, a random person that's in a class with you. Ask them if they wouldn't mind just helping you gain a little bit of experience because it would help you out. People are more willing to do you a favor when they don't have to invest anything. They don't even have to order but it's gonna give you that great experience, so you're gonna get that experience in doing a party, and you're gonna get probably some sales out of it, right? So that's a tip there. Um, doing these things are gonna make you, uh, do things that are gonna make you stand out among everyone else. Um, most people either have never heard of LipSense before, or they're in multiple Facebook customer groups and they hear the same things from distributors all the time. So like we've been saying, like our Sunday shout outs, so you want to stand out among the crowd. So what are you doing to make yourself different, to make yourself stand out among everyone else, um, both within our team and with your customers? Because like I said, most of them are in multiple groups. And if you can do something different that makes you relate to them, um, or just makes people think of you more. That's going to get more interaction and more sales. All right. So, uh, do, 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 do. oh, when people, you should know this, when people get stuck in a rut, that is when they give up. That is when they say, you know what? It's just not working for me. I'm out of here. So that is with everything. People quit school all the time, especially in their freshman year. Um, retention rates for pretty much any school in college is going to be significantly higher for their freshman year, even their first semester, even the first month, because when they first get in there, it's really hard. They're so new to it, they don't understand what's going on, and it's just really rough because they're just so unaware of everything and it takes some time to get used to it and some time to adjust to this new schedule, um, to this new life that they've got going on and all of this work that they've got. So they've committed themselves to it and then it's just, it's just too hard. So the people that stick it out for those four, or even five years sometimes, if they can stick it out through those years of school, they will have a degree. They've earned this mass, this, this huge degree. It's a huge accomplishment, right? Um, and if they can make it that far, they can go get a job that is going to be like a career for them. So if you can, if you take that example with Sunagents, you can do this for a couple months. Pretty much everybody does really good in their first couple months. They have a launch party. They, everybody is brand new to their friends and their family and they're all really excited about it and they buy from them. And then after those first couple of months, they hit this slump. So their sales go up, 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 and then they just start to like slow down, 
and they go down and down and down and down. And it's really hard to stay motivated. When you're at this point, when you're going downward a little bit or even just staying steady, it's really hard. Those that make it past this part, I'll move over here, that make it past this part, if you keep posting consistently all through here, or is it this way, all through here, you're gonna go up. You're gonna go back up, I promise you. I'm gonna talk more about that in a second, but if you can stick with it, you will see massive benefits from this, okay? Not just in your sales and monet like financially, but personal development. And I'll talk more about that in a second too, but if you can stick with this for a little bit longer, you just keep giving yourself a little bit longer to do this. Set some goals for yourself and you will get there. Um, I'm happy if you just reach out to me because I'll talk about this again in a second too, but if you can, if you ask for help, excuse me, if you ask for help, you will get, you will get what you need. You will. So you just have to be willing to ask and take that step to get to where you need to be. So I think that was pretty much everything. Okay. So listen to the rest of this video. Um, what did I write down here? I want to show you. Oh, so buckle, I wrote this down, buckle up and get ready to listen to the rest of this training while you're doing work or folding laundry um, or washing dishes or whatever. I'm about to read some really great stuff for you guys. <clears throat> this is from the Success Principles by Jack Canfield. So I was writing down all these notes for myself and I was gonna talk about them with you guys, but I think you're gonna get way more out of it if I just read specific excerpts, ex excerpts? How do you say that word? If I read specific parts of the book to you, that is going to, um, that's going to help you more if I just read verbatim right out of it. So, uh, oh, so I've got this book. This is a used copy that I got for myself, but I will be giving away, if we have um, people that are interested, I will be giving away a brand new copy of this and we'll be doing that at the end of the month, or maybe, well, probably the beginning of April, based on those of you that have basically earned it. Um, so I'll be giving one away and you have to put forth the efforts. You've got to put forth um, that work. You've got to, I'll talk about this more in a second too, but you have to take 100% responsibility for your life, for your successes, for your failures. You have to take responsibility for those um, or you're just not going to succeed um, or be where you want to be in life. So I'll pose questions over the next couple of weeks to help gauge like how you're doing with this. And this isn't just in your business. This is in your personal life. This is with your day job. This is with your family, with your spouse. This is for everybody, okay? This is not just sentences. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hop right in here and let me get another sip real quick. I'm going to try to keep this um, brief as much as I can. There's so much good stuff in here. So I actually went through and I highlighted parts that I wanted to read to you guys. And I might stop in the middle and like say stuff. But so this is The Success Principles by Jack Canfield. He actually is the co-creator of the original Chicken Soup for the Souls. And he's like, I listened to this book on audio. Um, my husband has, I think it's called Scribd. It's an app and you just pay like $10 for it or something like that. And um, I can get you the information for that if you'd like. But listening to this while I was painting my house last weekend was huge. Listening to this it got me so pumped up and motivated. Um, I just feel like this is so helpful on so many levels. And oh, that's what I was going to talk about was personal development. So... Our Crown Princess Ashley talks about this and she is a huge, huge advocate for personal development. Um, a lot of the successful people in Senegence in direct sales and um, in corporate America, are they're very big on personal development. And I've always thought that was kind of cheesy and I don't need to do that. And then I was like, okay, well maybe I'll give it a try. And so I started oh, listening to podcasts and uh, random videos that different trainings have gone on in the groups that we're in. 
And it just was like, okay, yeah, that's like, it's motivating, awesome, I feel better, here's a good tip for how to do things, here's a good tip for how to like act and feel. And I really, it just kind of kept wearing down on me like, okay, maybe I should go more into this personal development thing. So that's kind of what led me to listen to this book. So I've got it on my phone and I can listen to it, um, but it doesn't go through like the entire chapters. So this chapter is, let's see, like 30, about 30 pages long. I'm just going to read a few pages to you. Um, not even the whole pages, like just blurbs of it. And I'll go in between and to probably explain a little more. But okay, enough of that. Personal development really is, I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt for saying this and also for taking this long to say this. Um, but personal development really is a big important thing that's going to help you in your life and in your business significantly. So if you can just listen to a podcast or listen, I can send you stuff. Um, Ashley has a bunch of really good suggestions as well in her group. And yeah, so let's get into it. So this is the, the Success Principles by Jack Canfield. In case you are wondering, the edition that I'm reading out of is the 10th anniversary edition. So hey, Julie. Okay, we're going to hop right in. If this is from principle one, and that's all we're going to talk about today, next week we'll do principle two and there are 10 principles if I remember correctly I should know this pretty sure there's 10 um, but we're actually going to be doing this for a while this is a huge book um, so I will just do principle one today so right specifically from here it says if you want to be let's see if I can pull this out there we go if you want to be successful, you have to take 100% responsibility for everything that you experience in your life. This includes the level of achievements, the results you produce, the quality of your relationships, the state of your health and physical fitness, your income, your debts, your feelings, pretty much everything. This is not easy. In fact, most of us have been conditioned to blame something outside of ourselves for the parts of our life we don't like. We blame our parents, our bosses, our friends, our coworkers, our spouse, the weather, the economy, the government, our astrological chart, our lack of money. Anyone we can blame anything on, we blame it on. We never want to look at where the real problem is. The real problem is ourselves. And that is what this chapter is about. I skipped a page, hold on. Okay, so you have to expect, ex, you have to accept 100% responsibility for everything. Everything that happens to you, everything that you do, everything that happens in your life, you have to take 100% responsibility for that. It's like I said, this is not easy, this is difficult, um, and that's why only the very successful people are able to do this. You don't see someone that's super successful almost ever that is not willing to accept responsibility for their failures and their successes. Um, you, they're humbled usually because they've, they're able to, they're, they're able to look back at their failures and see how they could have done that differently. Um, so I'll talk more about that in a second. You have to give up all of your excuses. I should preface the rest of this by saying, I am working on this myself. There are things in here that's like specifically are like, whoa, that like really sparks a chord with me, strikes a chord, something like that. Um, and so if we can do this, our lives are gonna change. So I'm gonna go right on here through this with you guys, all these principles. I'll let you know if like I'm struggling with something going forward. Um, and what has really worked for me, that sort of thing. And I'd love to hear your feedback too. So if you want to create the life of your dreams, then you are going to have to take 100 responsibility for 100% responsibility for your life as well. That means giving up all of your excuses, all of your victim stories, all the reasons why you can't and why you haven't up until now, and all your blaming of outside circumstances. You have to give them all up forever. Now that's a huge powerful statement. You have to take the position that you have always had the power to make it different, to get it right, to produce the desired result. For whatever reason, ignorance, lack of awareness, fear, needing to be right, the need to feel safe, 
You choose not to exercise that power. Who knows why? It doesn't matter. The past is the past, and all that matters now is that from this point forward, you choose. That's right. It's a choice to act as if you are 100% responsible for everything that does or doesn't happen to you. So here is, I'll actually go back and read this one spot real quick for you. So if something doesn't turn out as planned, you will ask yourself, how did I create that? What was I thinking? What were my beliefs? What did I say or not say? What did I do or not do to create that result? How did I get the other person to act that way? What do I need to do differently next time I get the result I want? To get the result I want. So, this is an equation that um, Jack Canfield came up with. He actually met with um, a guy named Doc, Mr. Stone and Dr. He met some guy, okay? And he basically explained that here's a very important formula um, to, to take this 100% responsibility idea and make it clearer. So basically this formula is E plus R equals O. Event plus response equals outcome. So the event plus the response equals the outcome that you experience. So let's go into a little more detail. You can blame the E event for your lack of results. O or your outcome. So in other words, you can blame the economy, the weather, the lack of money, your lack of education, racism, gender bias, the current administration in Washington, your parents, your wife or husband, <clears throat> your boss's attitude, your employees, the system or lack of systems, and so on. If you, uh, oh, so no doubt all of these factors do exist, but if they were the deciding factor, nobody would ever succeed in anything because those people that do succeed do not blame other people for where they're at in their life. It is not the, where went, whoo. It's not the external conditions and circumstances that stop you, it's you. We stop ourselves. We think limiting thoughts and engage in self-defeating behaviors. We defend our self-destructive habits such as drinking, smoking, not getting enough sleep, with indefensible logic. We ignore useful feedback and fail continuously to educate ourselves and learn new skills. We waste time on the trivial aspects of our lives. We engage in idle gossip. We eat unhealthy food. We fail to exercise. We spend more money than we make. We fail to invest in our future. We avoid necessary conflict. We fail to tell the uncomfortable truth and we don't ask for what we want. And then we wonder why our lives aren't working the way we want them to. So that is E, which is event. The response, I'm sorry. Yes, the response, R, is you can instead simply change your response to the events and the way things are until you get the outcomes that you want. So I'll say that again. You can instead simply change your responses to these events the way things are until you get the outcome that you want. So you, let's see here, we get stuck in our conditioned responses to our spouses and our children and our colleagues at work, our classmates, our customers, our clients, our students, and to the world at large. We are a bundle of conditioned reflexes that operate outside of our control. You have Oh, you have to regain control of your thoughts, your images, your dreams, your daydreams, and your behavior. Everything you think and say and do needs to become intentional and aligned with your purpose, your values, and your goals. So this is where the mind shift change like happens. This is where you go from this is how things have been to this is how things will be. You need to make these changes in your brain and it's going to be hard and it's going to take discipline but if you follow these steps you will be happier with your relationships you'll be happier with your house you'll be happier with your life you'll be happier with your dogs this is going to change everything okay <clears throat>
have another sip really quick. If you don't like your outcomes, change your responses. Let's take this example here. Um, there in Los Angeles, there was a terrible earthquake. This was years and years ago. A couple days later, there was a CNN reporter that was walking around interviewing people during the com their commute to work. Traffic was at a standstill, and what was normally a one-hour drive had become a two- or three-hour drive. The CNN reporter knocked on the window of one of the cars stuck in traffic and asked the driver how he was doing. He angrily responded, I hate California. First there were fires, then there were floods, now an earthquake. No matter what time I leave in the morning, I'm going to be late for work. This sucks. The reporter knocked on the window of the car behind him and asked the second driver the same question. This driver was all smiles. He replied, it's no problem. I left my house at 5 a.m. I don't think under the circumstances my boss can ask for more than that. I have lots of music and my Spanish language lessons with me. I've got my cell phone, I have coffee and a thermos, my lunch, and I even brought a book to read, so I'm fine. Now, if the earthquake or the traffic, the event, were really the deciding variables, then everyone in the traffic situation would be angry, right? But everyone wasn't. It was their own individual responses to the traffic that gave them their particular outcomes. It was thinking negative thoughts or thinking positive thoughts, leaving the house prepared or leaving the house unprepared that made the difference. It was all a matter of attitude and behavior that created their completely different experiences. So if you take this with sentences, I can say, I don't have any sales. I, this just sucks. Nobody wants to buy from me. I just don't know what I'm going to do. Or I can say, shoot, I don't have any sales. What am I going to do to make this work? How am I going to get more sales? Do you see how there's a difference between complaining about it and just being frustrated? Because we're all frustrated at times, right? But just sitting there and dwelling on that compared to how can I change this? How can I make this better? How can I get more sales? It's all in your head, and you've got to find a way to motivate yourself. And I tell you what, holy cow, motivating myself sometimes is not easy. Normally, I'm like pumped up 24-7, like, senegent, senegent, senegent. And the past, what was it? Sunday and Monday, I was just like, you know, I'm just not feeling it today. So if you can find a way, and it's so stinking hard. You guys, I was just stuck in this rut, and I just was not into it at all. Um, and I just, just didn't have the energy or I don't know. It was just something in my head. And I know this has been going through everybody's heads lately. Anyone I've talked to, they've just had like, well, it's just not working out right now. You've got to, if you want this to work, if you want this to be a part of your life, you need to make the decision, which is what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm making the decision. This is going to, like, this is going to happen for me. This is my future. And I'm sticking in here for the long haul. I'm not going anywhere. And that's kind of my point with that, I guess. So it's all in your head. It's all about your attitude. You can go in prepared or you can go in unpre unprepared. You can go in making the decision that this is just the way it is and I'm going to find a way to make it better, like bringing things in your car during traffic so you can listen to Spanish lessons, or I'm going to sit here and complain the whole time, which is more stressful. I don't want to sit in traffic either way, but if you're prepared for it, it's way easier. So let's prepare ourselves. Okay, everything you experience today is the result of choices you have made in the past. Okay, this is a rough one because I can personally, like, this is, like, this is one of those things that rings true to me. Um, everything you experience in life, <clears throat> both internally and externally, so emotionally and um, like that people see outside of you is the result of how you have responded to a previous event. <clears throat> Hold on. Everything you experience in life, both internally and externally, is the result of how you have responded to a previous event. Hey, April. So 
I'm reading through, you're going to have to go back through the beginning, definitely watch the beginning of this. Um, so here's an example of the event, response, and outcome. Fix my hair here. Um, the event is you're given $400 bonus. Woohoo! Your response, you spend it on a night out on the town with friends, or you spend it uh, on a new TV. The outcome, you're broke, right? If you, I'm going to switch this example up a little bit, but the event, you're given a $400 bonus. The response, you invest it in a mutual fund, or in my situation, I would put it towards like my mortgage or um, like my gas bill, which keeps going up for some reason. Like I'd put it towards something that I would normally have to be paying um, that would be a, like a stressor for me. The outcome, you have an increased net worth or you have one less bill to pay that month. So you have control over only three things in your life. According to this book, three things you have control over, that's it. The thoughts that you think, the images you visualize, and the actions that you take or your behavior. So how you use these three things determines everything you experience, everything. Okay, <clears throat> this book doesn't talk about, or at least not in this chapter, it doesn't talk about death or like a parent's divorce, but I think you can kind of get the picture here. And a lot of it has to do with your response because again, the event plus the response equals the outcome that you experience. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you keep on doing what you've always done, you'll always keep on getting what you've always got. I'm going to say that again. If you keep on doing what you've always done, you'll keep on getting what you've always got. I feel like this is so important. So I'm going to say that. I won't say it again. But okay, this part says, the 12-step program, such as Alcoholics Anonymous, defines insanity as continuing the same behavior and expecting a different result. So, for example, oh, it says it right here. It ain't going to happen, okay? So, if you're an alcoholic and you keep on drinking, your life is not going to get any better. Likewise, if you only continue your current behaviors, your life is not going to get any better either. The day that you change your responses is the day your life will begin to get better. If, you are, if what you currently are doing would produce the more and better that you are seeking in life, the more and better would have already shown up. What? If you want something different, you're going to have to do something different. So I'll say that again. If you keep on doing what you've always done, You'll keep on getting what you've always got. So if you don't like where you're at, you need to change what you're doing to get something different. Does that make sense? The next part of this principle is you have to give up blaming. This is a hard one for me personally. It's way easier just to blame someone else for um, mistakes that happen, I guess you could say. Um, I'm trying to think of an example off my head, but I can't really, I guess. Basically, if you, this will explain it. I'll read right here. If you're going to be a winner, you have to acknowledge the truth. It is you who took the actions, thought the thoughts, and created the feelings, and made the choices that got you to where you are today. It was you. You are the one who ate the junk food. You're the one who didn't say no. You are the one who took the job. You are the one who stayed in the job. You are the one who abandoned your dream. You are the one who bought it. You are the one who didn't take care of it. And you are the one who said yes to the dogs. Holy cow. That line really, really spoke to me when I was listening to this a couple weeks ago. It was, I bought both, like it was my idea to get both of our dogs. I cannot tell you how much they stress me out on probably an almost daily basis. I love them. They're great. That's about all I can say positively about them. So I love my dogs, but I got them. It was my decision, but it was a joint decision with my husband, I guess. But I was the one that like picked them out and all that. So we'll get back to that in a second. In short, you thought the thoughts, you created the feelings, you made the choice, you said the words, 
And that's why you are where you are now. So, and this is where we get to talk about the dogs again. <clears throat> you have to give up complaining. Uh, Lou Holtz, who is the only coach in NCAA history to lead six different college teams to postseason bowl games and the winner of the national championship and the coach of the year honors and is now an ESPN football analyst. So he's kind of a big deal, right? He said, <clears throat> the man who complains about the way the ball bounces is likely to be the one who dropped it. Or in other words, the person that complains about the way something happened is usually the one who messed it up in the first place. If you didn't believe there was something better, uh, let me read that again. If you didn't believe there was something better possible, more money, a bigger house, a more fulfilling job, more fun, a more loving partner, you couldn't complain. You have this image of something better and you know you would prefer it, but you are unwilling to take the risks required to create it. Complaining is an ineffective response to an event that does not produce a better outcome. Uh, it gives here the example of, have you ever heard of anyone complain about gravity? Maybe in joke in passing, um, but you don't see an old, you don't see people in retirement communities that are complaining about gravity and now their back's like over because of gravity, right? We don't complain about gravity because there's nothing you can do about it. It's part of life. So people only complain about things that they can change. That's kind of the point here is that they, you don't, you only complain about things usually that, that you actually could do something about, or you know that there's a better option out there. Um, for example, I'm trying to think of something off the top of my head. Um, you complain about your job. You know there's a better job out there that you could get, but you're not doing it for some reason. So we'll give you some examples. Based on like that list I just gave you earlier about like you're the one who ate the junk food, that sort of thing, you could learn to cook healthier food. Say no in the face of pressure. Quit and find a better job. Go back to school or get other resources to pursue your dream. Take better care of your possessions or sell or give away the dogs. Now, I don't know that my husband would be comfortable with selling or giving away our dogs. But what I could do is I have a problem. I like to complain and I like to blame my dogs for their behavior. I like to complain about their behavior. So what I could do instead of selling or giving them away would be to, well, I could do one or both. I could start training them and make sure that I make that like a consistent thing and train them and, or I could even get help with that and take them to obedience school. Yes, of course that costs money, but would it be worth my sanity? Probably. So why don't you do these simple things? It's because they involve risks. You run the risk of being unemployed, left alone, or ridiculed and judged by others. You run the risk of failure, confrontation, or being wrong. You run the risk of your mother, your neighbors, or your spouse disapproving of you. Making a change might take effort, money, and time. It might be uncomfortable, difficult, or confusing. And so, to avoid risking any of these uncomfortable feelings and experiences, you stay put and complain about it. Can I get an amen? How many people complain about things that you could easily change? You could easily change it, right? It's not, well, maybe I'll say simply change. You could simply make those changes. So, if you want to get from where you are to where you want to be, of course, you're going to have to take that risk. Make the decision to stop complaining to stop spending time with complainers and get on with creating the life of your dreams. We're getting real close to done here, just so you know. So simple isn't necessarily easy. Though this principle is simple, and this principle, just to remind you, is, I'll read it verbatim, take 100% of responsibility for your life. Take 100% responsibility for your life. You don't get to blame anybody else anymore. You don't get to complain anymore. You take responsibility for your life and you will see drastic positive results. 
So simple isn't necessarily easy. <clears throat> Though this principle is simple, it is not necessarily easy to implement. It requires concentrated awareness, dedicated discipline, and a willingness to experiment and take risks. You have to be willing to pay attention to what you are doing and to the results you are producing. You have to ask yourself, your family, your friends, your colleagues, your managers, your teachers, your coaches, and clients for feedback. Is what I'm doing working? Could I be doing it better? Is there something more I should be doing that I'm not? Is there something I am doing that I should stop doing? How do you see me limiting myself? Don't be afraid to ask. Most people are afraid to ask for feedback about how they're doing because they are afraid of what they're going to hear. And I understand that is very scary. Um, very scary. But there is nothing to be afraid of. The truth is the truth. You are better off knowing the truth than not knowing it. Wouldn't you agree? And once you know, you can do something about it. You cannot improve your life, your relationships, your game, or your performance without feedback from others. Uh, I'm going to read this part too. I didn't highlight it, but <clears throat> slow down, pay attention. Life will always give you feedback about the effects of your behavior if you will just pay attention. If your golf ball is always slicing to the right, if you're not making sales, if you're getting C's in all your college courses, if your children are mad at you, if your body is tired and weak, if your house is a mess, or if you're not happy, this is all feedback. It's telling you that something is wrong. This is the time to start paying attention to what is happening. Ask yourself, how am I creating or allowing this to happen to me? What am I doing that's working that I need to be doing more of? Should I be doing, should I do more practicing, meditating, delegating, trusting, listening, asking questions, keeping my eye on the ball, advertising, say I love you, controlling my carbohydrate intake, or what am I doing that's not working? What do I do, what do I need to be doing less of? Am I talking too much, watching too much TV, spending too much money, eating too much sugar, drinking too much, being late too often, gossiping, putting other people down? Ask yourself, what am I not doing that I need to try and see if it works? Do I need to listen more, exercise, get more sleep, drink more water, ask for help, do more marketing, read, plan, communicate, delegate, follow through, hire a coach, volunteer, or be more appreciative? The last and final point that I'm going to talk about tonight is pay attention. Your results don't lie. The easiest, fastest, and best way to find out what is not is or isn't working is to pay attention to the results that you're currently producing, what you're currently experiencing. You're either rich or you're not. You either command respect or you don't. You're either maintaining your ideal body weight or you're not. You're either happy or you're not. You either have what you want or you don't. It's that simple. The results just don't lie. You have to give up. We'll recap here a little bit. You have to give up any excuses and justifications and come to terms with the results you are producing because you are the one producing them. If you are under quota or overweight, all the great reasons in the world aren't going to change that. The only thing that will change your results is to change your behavior. Prospect more, get more sales training, change your sales presentation, change your diet, consume fewer calories, exercise more frequently. These are the things that will make a difference. But you have to first be willing to look at the results that you are producing. The only starting point that works is reality. Don't kid yourself. Be ruthlessly honest with yourself. Take your own inventory. So to kind of recap here, and I know that this was a lot. Like I just read for 25 minutes with you guys. If you want to do this, and if you, and this isn't even with just sentence. This is in life your day job, your relationship with someone. If you want 
to be happy and you want to be successful or whatever you consider that to be, if you want it to be a certain way, you have to take responsibility, 100% full responsibility for what is happening and you have to make these changes to make it the way that you want it to be. Does that make sense? I'm going to say one thing last and then we'll be done. I already said this a couple of times, but I feel like it's so strong. You have to, if you keep on doing what you've always done, you'll keep on getting what you've always got. So if you're happy with what is going on right now in your life or whatever aspect you want to think about right now, if you keep on doing things the way that you are doing them, that's where you're going to go. You're going down that path or that road and that's what's going to that's that's where you're headed. If you don't like where you're headed, you got to change it or you're going to keep going. If you keep if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to get what you've always got. If you want something different, you have to change your route. You have to go a different way. So, kind of relate that real back to sentence real quick. And this is speaking to myself as well. I haven't been posting and I'm not having a lot of sales. So I want sales, so I'm gonna be posting and I'm gonna be following up my customers and I'm gonna reach out and ask a couple of friends to let me do a Facebook party. Um, I'm gonna ask a couple of friends. I haven't talked to a couple of these friends that I've been thinking of for months and months and months and we used to hang out all the time. And I know that I would be comfortable once they got here. I'd be really nervous to ask them. So, if I say this out loud, then I know I'm gonna do it because I have to keep myself accountable to you guys. So, I'm gonna reach out to two gals specifically, and they might say no, and that's the worst thing that's gonna happen, right? I'm gonna ask, out, ask two of my friends specifically if I could come over to their house or if they could come to my house, we'll schedule a time, and I wanna do a makeover on them. Holy cow, I'm like nervous right now because that was really hard. Um, but I said it out loud, so now I have to do it, right? There we go. Okay, so find something to push yourself. Find something to change the way that you're doing things. If you're not happy with your sales, talk to me, talk to your upline. Um, let's get some ideas and see what you should, what's doing, what's working well for you. And let's find a way to get you those sales by changing the actions that you're doing. Because everything that happens to you is because of you. All right? Okay. Have a wonderful night. Thanks so much for watching uh, or listening. And I can't wait to talk to you guys next week, Monday or Tuesday. We'll see. One of those two days, we'll do our next principle number two of the success principles by Jack Canfield. The night. <laughs>